In this episode, I'll draw a simple CD slash DVD jewel case in Inkscape version 0.46. Before we begin, I would like to say that I'm sorry for being a little behind on my screencast lately. I've had a very busy last couple of months, busy at work, busy at home. Uh, since weather is uh, warm here, I've been spending much of my evenings outdoors either playing with my kids or painting or standing or mowing or building something. And uh, my honeydew list seems to be getting longer. Also, I had a screencast all queued up for the middle of May, but I ran into some disparity between my Linux and Windows versions of Inkscape regarding some effects. Seems like what I wanted to do worked in Windows, but not in Linux, uh, specifically Ubuntu uh, 904. I could have chosen to screencast in Windows for that particular episode, uh, and I didn't think it would have bothered anybody, but I would rather do my recording and producing in Linux. Plus, I don't need Dan from the Linux Link Tech Show uh, raking me over the Windows coals like he did Richard a few weeks ago. Richard hasn't totally recovered from the incident, and uh, from what I understand, he's been seeking legal advice from our lawyer, Jackie Childs, in an attempt to rectify the situation monetarily or at least bring down the Linux Link Tech Show altogether. Just kidding, folks. Anyway, I hope those uh, Inkscape issues will be ironed out for the upcoming release of uh, 047. I'm crossing my fingers that uh, this will be at least a uh, this will be my last screencast in version 046. So let's hope for a speedy release. I also want to note that uh, I got the inspiration from this screencast from this particular image on this particular website, GraphicRiver.net. Um, it was this image right here that I wanted to duplicate. Uh, I'm not going to do it one for one. Uh, mine's going to be a little simpler, uh, just for the sake of, of uh, speeding along the screencast. Um, but this is kind of the image that I want to that I want to draw. So, again, mine's not going to be identical, um, but it's going to be close. So, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Um, I just want to warn you too that I've got a lot of colors that I'm using in the uh, kind of like the grayscale type of uh, a color palette. So I'm going to bring in a uh, my color palette, use that as my cheat sheet. That way I don't have to keep plugging in these numbers. We'll just put this up here out of the way. <clears throat> and I also have a cheat sheet that I'm using uh, on my desk here, just so I can follow the steps. It's, it's not really a, a difficult thing to draw, it's just that I keep forgetting uh, the colors that I want to use. So... If I'm pausing here or there, it's because I'm looking at my uh, cheat sheet. Something to drink here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing I'm going to do is set up my uh, my document to be black. That way it'll be easier to see uh, some of these things. And I'm going to set the size up for 700 wide by 500. And let's see if I can get that back on my page and make this just a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'll hit 5 to zoom in on that page. <clears throat> okay, now, the first thing I'm going to do is grab a uh, my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to need a stroke of 1 pixel. And I'm going to make this, let's chew this up just a little bit. Make this 440 wide, 384 high. And I'm going to put that in the center of my page. There we go. All right, and let's just scoot over just a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is make my fill this first color here. So I'm going to select my uh, eyedropper and pick on this. I know some of these colors are going to be a little hard to see, uh, but once I get my strokes turned on around here, uh, things will, will, uh, will show up a little bit better. And I'm going to make sure that my stroke is uh, the 78 color here. So I'm going to hold my shift key down, select my eyedropper, and pick that and 
Let me zoom in on that. And that's going to give me a dark background with a lighter stroke. And I want to make sure that my radii are three pixels around here. There we go. We'll zoom back out. Okay, that's that portion. Um, I think the next thing that I'll do is draw our side piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. We'll slide that over. This way here. And I need to make this thing 50 by 370. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's try the width here. 50. 370. Okay, and what I want to do for this particular, well, let's make sure that I've got my radii correct around here. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got a, uh, a radius on this side, uh, but not on this side. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this, slide this over just a little bit. And we'll slide that in. And I'm going to make sure that that is straight. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is select this, select this background image here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to my align and distribute. We'll do last selected. I'm going to center that up this way, and we're going to push that all the way over to the side. I'm going to select both of these and do a union, okay? That's just a little quick and dirty way of, of getting a, a corner here and then having a, a radius there. So let me check my size, uh, 50 by 370. Okay, I think I'm pretty good. Let's zoom back out. And we'll select both of these images. We'll go to our Align dialog. We will center it up this way, and I'll push that over this way. Okay, and that's going to become our plastic, our dark plastic piece. I'm going to make sure that this plastic piece is all the way black, which I do. I got a one pixel stroke, and I've got the same highlight around it. Okay, now I just want to warn you that I'm not making this background um, completely transparent. Uh, I'm going to do that for a reason, uh, and when I get a little further into the screencast, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. But I thought it would be better not to have an entire overlay, a transparent overlay of my uh, CD, because um, I think it would just be a confusing step. So we're going to do it my way. All right, let's get on to the next step here. Uh, I'm going to make a, let's see, I'm going to duplicate this, this outside image. And I'm going to bring this in just a little bit. We'll move it around here. Okay. I'm going to double click on this, make my corners sharp. And what I need to do is let me look at my notes here. I have to make this a Two pixel stroke. Okay. I'm going to remove the fill. And I'm going to make this 375 wide, 370 high. And I'm going to select both of these things here. We'll go to our align. We'll center it up on the uh, vertical. And then I'm going to throw it all the way over to the side. And then I'm going to back it away. So I think what I'm going to do is try a 188 here. And I think that will pretty much center that on the sides here. Okay. Now I want to make sure that my stroke is correct. My stroke should be all black. 
So what I'm going to do is hold my shift key down, select my color dropper, and pick my all black color. And I know that it's very hard to see, but I do have a black outline there. Okay, let's zoom back in. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, zoom in on this here. I'm going to select this all black stroke. I'm going to duplicate this. And we are going to make its border. Let's see, where is it? Okay, I'm going to make this border. Uh, I'm going to hold my shift and pick this 8 9 color here. And I'm going to make this. I think at 0.25. Zoom in on this. Okay, we're going to do a dynamic offset. I'm going to pull that down just to the inside. Again, I know it's hard to see. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I click on that. We're going to convert that to a path. I'm going to pick this node and break it. This node and break it. I'm going to pick this node, delete that, delete this. And I'll show you what I've done. Okay, what I'm trying to do is to show like an emboss, okay? And I and I I can't stress how difficult it is to see this. Um, but when you zoom out a little bit, uh, what it looks like is uh, that we've got just a little bit of a shine or a raised surface on this inner surface here. Okay, You'll see it in your final image. Uh, when you do a PNG out, uh, you'll see that nice little highlight there, and it'll look like I've, you've got a raised surface. So that's what I've done. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I've got everything there, so let me just double check, okay. What I'm going to do now is draw the highlights because uh, what we have is a ribbed surface here or a grooved surface on this plastic piece. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I have... I see what's going on now. Just a second here. I had my transparency off. So what I want to do now is click on my fill again. There we go. I didn't check it, but I had apparently I had my transparency set to 70%. Okay, so now I'm all set. So now we can see things just a little bit better now. There we go. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I make mistakes like that all the time, and uh, sometimes it just goofs me up, and I'm like, uh, what is wrong with this? And then, you know, I'll notice something like that. So, anyways. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, I'm going to make these uh, grooves in here. So I'm going to grab my Bezier pen. I'm going to hold my control key down and draw something straight about like this. Hit enter. And so we can see it. I'll just make this thing white for now. And I want to make sure that my caps are rounded. Okay, and I'm going to make this thing... Let's see, what I need to do is... This thing's got to be... 367 pixels high. So I'll do that now. Okay, and I want to make this thing, it looks like, I'm making it 0.25. And I'm going to grab my tool here, my eyedropper, and select this 373. 
okay and that makes it super light so we're gonna put that on top here so we can see it okay I'm gonna select this and this We'll go to our line I'm gonna center that up uh, horizontally and I'll push it over here this way okay these are all the all these highlights here are uh, real subtle uh, I don't want to make them too extreme because it'll start making the image look like it's fake okay so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this thing um, 19 times so I have a total of 20 and uh, we can do that by doing our control D so what I'm gonna do is select this and do a control D you watch my uh, status bar down here See if I've got 20 of them. It doesn't look like it. Might have to zoom out and do it again here. Yeah, I got 20 objects, I guess. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all 20 objects. We're going to go to Object, Rows and Columns. 20 should already be in your columns if it isn't put 20 there and we're gonna space this thing about two pixels apart I'll hit a range got all 20 there I'm gonna go ahead and group that slide that over I'll select this object here we'll go to our line and I'll center that up both vertically and horizontally and what you'll see is these nice little grooves here now when you're zoomed out like a, again that's just a subtle uh, grooving you know it's kinda what I'm after alright let's carry on uh, next thing I need to do is draw a circle so I'm gonna get that going here let's make this red so we can see it so you guys can see it uh, I need to make this circle looks like a 370 with a two pixel border or a stroke. I'm going to hold my lock down, make this 370 here. Select our circle, select our inside black stroke that we drew, and we're going to center that up horizontally and vertically. All right. And we need to get our color correct, so we're going to make this inside circle black. Uh, grab our eyedropper, select our black color. And it looks like our stroke needs to be the 898 number here. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and pick that stroke. And I get a circle that looks just like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, put a gradient on this stroke so it makes it look like we've got a little bit of highlight uh, there. My light source is going to be coming down this way. So I'll select the circle, uh, I'll select our gradient, and um, let's do it this way here. Let's go to our color, and I'll do a radial gradient here. I'm going to push this down this way move this up this way here and we'll bring that in just a little bit okay I think that looks pretty good Let me grab a sip of water all right I think we're getting closer um, next thing I'll do here is Let's make some uh, plastic uh, jacket or leaf tabs on the inside. Uh, so what I need to do is I'll zoom in on this area here, and I'm going to draw a circle. Um, looks like I'll need a one pixel stroke. And I'm going to make that circle 24 pixels in diameter. and let me zoom out here and I need to make the color of this particular thing this is gonna be our 5353 
color. And I want to make sure I have my stroke correct. It's going to be the 7878. So we're going to hold our shift key down, get our stroke correct. And I want to make this a half circle. So I'm going to highlight this, uh, double click, oop, double click. And the circle uh, handle that I have here, I'm going to hold my control key down and walk that back all the way to the other side, and I'll get a half circle. And I'm going to go ahead and flip that. And we're going to put this about right in here. Okay, so I'm going to select this. We're going to select our outside border. We'll go to our align dialog. And I think what I need is the align bottoms. Okay, we'll zoom out. I need another one of these, so I'm going to right click on that and duplicate it. And I'm going to slide one over to the other side. Again, I'm just eyeing this. I'll select both. We'll group them. We'll leave that selected. We're going to select our black stroke around here and we're going to center that up. I'm going to take that and duplicate it. Move it up. We're going to flip that. We'll select our outside as well. Having last selected uh, as our option here, we'll move that all the way up to the top. And that'll give us our little uh, insert uh, tabs there for our uh, artwork or paperwork. If that's, uh, if your personal preference, if these tabs look a little too light to you, what you can do is just uh, dial back that fill, uh, make it look just a little bit more transparent, make it a little bit more realistic. All right, uh, I think we've got to that point. So let's go ahead and draw the middle of our CD-ROM here. Uh, what I need is a circle. And we're going to make that a full circle. And I'm going to make this thing, let's see, I'm going to need a 4-pixel stroke. And I need to have the size... 108 and let's see here I'm gonna remove the fill and for the stroke I need the BABD so I'm gonna hold my shift key eyedropper find my BABD color there we go and we're gonna move that over here okay I'm gonna duplicate that move a copy down now this one I need to have a fill, which is our 6B6D fill. So we'll find that. And I need to have a stroke color, the 2D, 2D color. I'm going to hold my shift key. Grab that. And let's see. This is going to be a 2 pixel stroke. And I have to change the size. This is going to be... 100 pixels in diameter. All right, now we're going to duplicate this, move another copy down. I'm going to zoom in on this here. And what we're going to do, I want to make sure you guys can see this, so I'm going to draw an object in the back here. Matter of fact, I'll make that white. Lower it all the way to the bottom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove the fill. So I have a stroke here. And let me zoom out. I need to get my stroke color correct. And it looks like I need a stroke of the 2F30. So I'm going to hold my shift key down. 2F30. There we go. I'll zoom back in on this. Okay, now what I need to do is give it a 3% blur and 50% transparency. But before I do that, I'm going to right click on that and duplicate. And actually, let me delete that because I'm going to make this. 
Let's see, we'll make this 80 pixels in diameter. I don't want to forget that. We got to get that right from the beginning. Okay, now where was I? Uh, duplicate this, I guess. And we're going to make the duplicated copy uh, a half pixel in diameter. And we're going to change its color Let's see, what do I want for color here? I want the fill to be a white. But let me double check here. I think I want the fill to be a 2D, 2D color. No, I think I want it the E here. So let's do that. Let's hold our shift key down. Okay. Again, I apologize. It's a little, it's not very continuous in my talking here because I'm uh, looking at my uh, my cheat sheet. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is grab this, uh, grab our outside. So I'm going to make sure I select the uh, dark gray ring. You can look at your status bar down here. And uh, I'm going to select my color dialog. And what I need to do is make it a up a little higher. Make this a 3% blur and give this a transparency of, let me look, looks like I'm doing a 50. All right, and for the inside, the blue, we know we've got the, I'm sorry, the blue, the white. We know we've got the white because we're looking at our status bar down here. I want to make that about a 0.7 for blur, and we're going to make this about a 42% transparent. Okay. Now the reason I drew this uh, white background is so you could see that because it is very difficult to see that on that black background. Okay. So we'll just leave this here for now, and we'll zoom out and. We'll carry on here. I've got to draw another circle. So I'm going to draw, let's see, we'll do a circle that size. I need to have a fill, remove the stroke, and I want to make sure that I'm 100%. And this size needs to be a 66 pixel diameter circle. Matter of fact, I didn't get that right. That should be 45 pixels, sorry. Okay, that's better. And we need to have a fill. We'll use our darkest tango color. Uh, we'll duplicate this. I need to have a size of 26 now. We'll give it our tango white. And I'm going to center these up. Some of my icons have dropped off here to the side. Uh, I switched my uh, desktop theme in Ubuntu, and uh, my icons are a little bigger here. So that's why I have uh, some of my icons are uh, in this pull-down. Let me grab some water. Okay, and moving right along, what I need to do now is let's zoom in on this. And I'm going to draw a stroke. Hold our control key down so it's straight. And we're going to make that white so we can see it for now. And I want to give that rounded caps. So we're going to go to our fill and stroke dialog. We'll give it our rounded caps. And I'm going to make this thing, uh, this has to be one and a half pixels wide for the stroke. And it's got to be 66 pixels high. And I'll just click this a couple times to get a 66. All right. And we'll give this about a 65% transparency. And I'm going to put this right on top of this white circle. So we'll select both. We'll center that up. 
And what I'm going to do is, let's see, I need one, two, three, I need four total. So let's right click on that and hit our control D. One, two, three. That'll give me, let's do it one more time and see how many that is. And holding my control key down, I'm just going to rotate these around. I think I got one more in here. And let me delete that. Okay. So I want to make a shape look like that. I'm going to go ahead and group that together. And let me zoom back out. And I think I've got all the elements that I need to make up our center of our CD-ROM. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a circle out here in space. Make that blue. Um, we're going to give this a stroke of two pixels. And I'm going to make sure the size of this thing is 357. And I'm going to make sure that I have, let's see, a stroke should be our aluminum three. I'm going to make it, whoops, that should have been my stroke color. All right, and I'm going to duplicate this. Oops, I want to make sure that I'm 100% opaque. And I'm going to change this inside, or this uh, second circle here. We're going to make it 100 pixels in diameter. Okay, I want to put these two circles on top of each other, center it up. I'll select both of these and we will do a path difference. That way we can knock a hole in our uh, CD-ROM here. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object here and we're going to put it right on here. I'll go ahead and leave these open. And I'm going to take these things and I'll make sure I group that. We're going to put it on top of this. And I'm going to take this. Put that on top of each other. And I'll take this and this and put that on top of there. And actually, I want to undo that because I want to make sure this is to the very top. Do that again. There we go. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that white there. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on this and show you what I'm doing. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do uh, was draw the dark piece here, um, leaving the center white. Uh, that will kind of uh, illustrate the backside of a uh, jewel jacket or a jewel case. Uh, sometimes they have sleeves on the inside. And uh, uh, the back side of the uh, artwork is a white sheet, so I want to leave that white. Uh, these here are slices in our plastic. Uh, that way we can press the CD onto uh, the center piece here. And uh, we've got the round piece. We kind of embossed that round. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and put a gradient on it um, because I want to be able to see it. So that's what that looks like. And I'm going to make this thing here just a little bit bigger. Let's make this like, uh, let's see what a 10 looks like. Let's align that back up. There we go. All right, let's zoom back out. Okay, and this is going to be our... CD-ROM. So I'm going to go ahead and group that. Put that right on top of this circle here. Okay, we'll zoom in. Okay, and I think it's starting to take shape here. So we'll compare ours to, uh, to the image on the internet in just a minute. Uh, before I do that, let's, uh, let's add some artwork to this CD. 
So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. I'm going to duplicate this. I'll put that out there. And I need that ring. So I'm going to duplicate that. Actually, I'm going to copy that. And we'll paste it out here. And we'll place that on top of each other. Center that up. Okay, and I'm going to take the inside, the outside, and I'm going to do a difference there so I can make that a little bit bigger. Okay, now you can do anything you want for your CD artwork, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, just bring in, let's just bring in the KDE logo and play with it a little bit here. I'm going to ungroup it. You can get this logo from uh, Wikipedia, and we'll get rid of all this stuff in here, and I'll make this just a little bit bigger. And we'll go smaller. And I'm just going to eye this to get the center. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll just we'll get it close here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is take this and duplicate that. We'll move that K logo to the outside. Take our K, we'll take our CD, circle, and we're going to do a clip set. Okay, and I'm going to take this here. Uh, we're going to group that together. We'll select our CD-ROM over here. And we'll put that on top of each other. I'm going to take this and ungroup it. And we're going to get rid of blue image back here. Let's take a look at it here. I think that looks pretty good. It's close enough for centering. Okay, and let's give this CD color here. Let's give this a little bit of a gradient. I'll do a shift R to reverse that. We'll give it a dark to the inside. Matter of fact, let's give it light to the inside. Dark on the outside. We'll edit that. We'll make that just a little darker yet. Okay. Burn those edges just a little bit. Okay, I think it's starting to take shape here. Um, next, let's add a highlight through here, a glare. Make that white. We'll get rid of the stroke. We'll take our very outside image, and we will duplicate that. And we will do a path intersection. And I'm going to take this and we will do a dynamic offset. Just wanted to pull that in just a little bit. And we're going to make, we're going to give it a blur. We'll do just a 1% on that, and we're going to give it a gradient. We'll do a linear. I'll pull this up quite a bit here. Okay, and if you're not totally satisfied with that, you know, you can make, you know, a curvature. It's kind of kind of something you'd see typical of a of a highlight or whatever or move it around a little bit. I just want to grab just the top here so it makes it look like we've got just a little bit of a glare. And that is our jacket, our jewel case. Um, it's very hard to see. Um, what I'm going to do, 
let's get rid of this palette for now and let's bring in a background let's put that all the way to the bottom and let's center that up on our page Oop, let's select page here okay and I think what we need to do is add just a little bit of a drop shadow so let's uh, make that stroke all black make sure the fill is all black there we go and we'll give it about a two percent for a blur we'll give this about a maybe an eighty percent and we'll move this down just a little bit and we'll put it all the way to the bottom and then put our background all the way to the bottom there we go and we'll do a five here and that is our jewel case okay and what's neat about this jewel case if you want to make this just a little bit brighter let's fix that just before I carry on here there we go now what's neat about this jewel case is if you've got a, a, a project where it requires you to make a, a CD or a DVD or, or you want somebody to download something or you're putting something on, on digital media, um, these things are kind of cool. Um, you can put your own artwork on a CD-ROM and uh, put that on a website or whatever and, uh, and uh, make it look kind of kind of halfway decent so uh, uh, again you can carry on and add some of the things that I didn't add uh, on uh, the image here um, he's got some extra embossing um, I thought it would be neat to add the uh, the compact disc logo in here but that's just gonna drag the uh, screencast on longer and longer so uh, if you want to do that to yours that's fine but I think that's I think we're pretty close uh, some of my features are a little bit more subtle, um, but again, uh, jewel cases, there's like a bazillion different uh, designs, so uh, uh, if you're not sure if yours is accurate or if you want to take a, a different approach, uh, just grab one uh, and uh, take a look at it and uh, try to duplicate what you see. So. Uh, I hope that was uh, interesting and I hope you got something out of it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, maybe for my next screencast, uh, we'll, I'll be in uh, release uh, 047. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers that this is my last 046 screencast. So uh, release uh, 047 has some uh, awesome, awesome new features in there. I'm sure everybody will love. Um, so uh, I'm definitely uh, waiting to check that out. So. Uh, that's my screencast, so thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.